Ah, uh, yeah. Welcome into another episode of the Format Podcast. All right. Normally, we do these on Saturday nights at 7 p.m., and I wasn't planning on doing one, but um, uh, then, you know, I'm, watch- I'm watching these college football games, mainly the Texas and the Georgia, and I'm like, man, I got to get on and do this show, man. I got to get the people what they want. So here we are. Thanks for joining me. I appreciate you. And um, what we're going to do now, we're going to give a few minutes and uh, see if we get some people in the chat. Then we're going to go ahead and uh, and uh, get it started because i uh, got some good topics to discuss. It's just going to be me tonight. Um, the other guys on the team, they're not, they're not here tonight. So uh, I'm going to do this solo, and uh, hopefully I will do this with whoever decides to uh, join me, and we'll see what we got going on because, again, I think we got some really interesting topics. And uh, as you can see by the thumbnail, we're going to talk some Victor Weminyama and some really interesting top uh, comments that he made recently that I think may have something to do in terms of being reflective about the state of the modern NBA. Then we're going to talk about uh, Tim Hardaway Sr., a uh, Hall of Famer who's who was an outstanding player and kind of an innovator in certain ways. And we'll get to him and some comments that he had on uh, the recent uh, appearance on the All the Smoke podcast with uh, Matt Barnes and Steven Jackson. Then we'll talk about Kyle Shanahan and ask the big question, is he overrated? And finally, we will uh, close out by wrapping up some uh, college football. And I'm not going to get too into that because, as you know, we normally do a show with uh, our uh, former Division One wide receiver, kick returner, and professional, uh, Ryan. So um, we will do that later this week. But I definitely wanted to touch on some of the big uh, – some of my thoughts in college football before we call it a night. All right? So uh, before we get going with all that, you know what time it is. If you're here on YouTube and you haven't already, please make sure you go ahead, click that like, that subscribe, that notification bell. Make sure you're kept up to date whenever we drop new content on the channel. If you want the audio only version of the podcast, open up your audio podcast platform, hit the search bar, type in the format podcast, and we should come right up. If you're enjoying the content, make sure you give us that like, that five star review, and drop a comment. All that stuff helps us rise in the algorithm, helps us find more sports fans, helps more sports fans find us. And finally, Make sure you write it down, put it in your phone, set an alarm, do whatever you got to do to remember. Saturday nights at 7 p.m., we are live here on the Format Podcast, and we'll give you the opportunity to call in, talk to us, get at me. I love it. I can't. All right, so listening to The Odd Couple, um, and obviously, I think the impetus for this topic was this weekend we got a huge game, which is a rematch of last year's Super Bowl, and it's going to be between the 49ers and the Kansas City Chiefs, right? And so huge game, right? Two of the better teams in the league. Kansas City is obviously undefeated. I want to say the 49ers are now either four and three. And they're kind of they're kind of hitting their stride and finding their role. Obviously, Brock Purdy's been playing extremely well all season long, but uh that team is also that team being the 49ers has suffered from a bunch of injuries. And then you see uh the Chiefs are the defending champions. They're undefeated to this point, and they're finding ways to win, even though they don't look anything like the invincible unbeatable chiefs of the past but the difference is now they're winning with defense and um um geez what was i gonna say i'm sorry i lost my train of thought transformer and i have been talking ad nauseum about how this team is um so so well driven by the defense now right and how steve spagnolo is just uh such an incredible addition to this coaching staff and how he's one of the best if not currently the best big game defensive play caller in the league he is the reason that probably the Chiefs won the championship last year he is the reason that probably the Chiefs are undefeated this year because again as great as Patrick Mahomes is statistically he's not quite playing up to the level he's capable of he doesn't have the same weapons either so I get it but he he does always find a way to make the play when it's needed he and Kelsey but at the same time he's not they're not the laser light show that they used to be right but that's fine anyway So they're winning mostly with defense now. Anyway, as a result, you got this huge game with the 49ers and the Chiefs this weekend. And so it brought up Kyle Shanahan. And when we talk about the best coaches in the league, a lot of times we talk about who we talk about, Mike Tomlin. We talk about Andy Reid. We talk about Sean McVay. We talk about Mike Shanahan. And the thing is, Mike Shanahan is among the best coaches in the league. But then you say, is he really? Why? Right. Because we know how hard it is to win in the NFL and we've seen him uh, get to the NFL. We've seen him coach Matt Ryan to a league MVP and get to the Super Bowl as an OC with the Falcons. We've seen him get to two, excuse me, Super Bowls with the San Francisco 49ers as a head coach. And so he is one of the best coaches in the league. And we see that. But then the question is, is he overrated? 
And so it's like, uh, we don't know. So um, Lincoln Nation says Rob Parker never played a sport in his life. Talks like he knows more than retired players. Can't respect anyone who thinks his point of view is fact. So here's the deal, right? And this is what I love. Rob Parker is always quick to tell you, I've been doing this 38 years. I've been covering professional sports 38 years. That's a long time. That's a lot of people to be around. That's a lot of professional athletes to have talked to. It's a lot of coaches, executives, scouts, all these people to be around. And I think people disregard the amount that journalists learn from being around all these players, right? Journalists, not just making up stories and not just hanging around doing stuff, right? They spend a lot of time talking to people and learning as well as, you know, writing their stuff, et cetera, et cetera. They spend time in locker rooms. They spend time traveling with athletes. They spend time in post-game pressers, all that stuff. They learn a lot. Like if you if you ever listen to On the Ball Rick Bu- with Rick Buecher, that is a really sharp basketball dude. He's not, he's not Nick Wright just saying stuff to say it. Rick Buecher is a really sharp basketball dude. He knows the game extremely well. I think he's covered the NBA for like 25 years now. Really, really sharp. So the point is Rob Parker – this guy is a Hall of Fame voter for Major League Baseball. They don't give that to just anybody, right? He, he knows what he's talking about. Do I agree with him all the time? No. But I'm, I would never go as far as to say that. He doesn't know what he's talking about. And this whole business of we got to stop this. You didn't play, so you don't know what you're talking about. We've got to stop this. There's value in people who did play because there's a lot of people who played who don't know what they're talking about. And there's also value in people who didn't play, who put the time in to learn and study. And so... This this business of we got to stop using it as a derisive to say, oh, Rob Parker never played a sport in his life because the same athletes who say um, you didn't play, so you don't know what are you doing? Right. Those are the same athletes who want to tell him how to write his article or write his column. Well, they've never written an article. They've never written a column. They've never had to get it in on deadline. They've never had to get quotes. They've never had to be in a postgame pressure. They've never had to do all that. So how are they telling him how to do his job? Right. So I think that I think that. Two things can be true. I'm not saying that every athlete knows what they're talking about. I'm not saying every athlete doesn't. I'm not saying that every sports writer knows what he's talking about. I'm not saying every sports writer doesn't. I'm just saying, and I'm sure that I'm taking some of this personally as someone who's been there and done that, obviously at a much lower level, but someone who's been there and done that, I'm taking a bit of this personally because it is offensive when people say you didn't play, you don't know what you're talking about, which is why I always make it a point wherever possible to get the words of those who did play and those who do know, right? Because what happens is invariably, those people that disagree with me, they'll then move the goalposts. Well, that person don't know what they're talking about either, but you told me I didn't play, so I don't know. So now the person who agrees with me who did play, they don't know either, but anyway. So um, big big fan of Rob Parker. Again, don't always agree with what he had to say. Um, my very first uh, YouTube episode of this podcast, Rob Parker was a guest on. Um, and I was a fan of his before that. So it's not necessarily like, oh, you know, I'm just caping up for him because he came on the show, which was pretty cool. But anyway, back to Kyle Shanahan. Let's go ahead and listen to what Rob Parker um, had to say. Rob Parker and Kelvin Washington had to say about Kyle Shanahan because it was very interesting addressing the point or the question of is Kyle Shanahan overrated? So let's check it out and we'll come back and discuss. Because I do have a problem with Kyle Shanahan. As much winning as he's done, he's been to the Super Bowl a couple times. I think he's the most overrated coach in the NFL. And when it comes to big games and big moments, he wilts, he melts down. And then here's a stat that just is telling. Against the Chiefs, the Ravens, and the Bills, he's 0-7. 0-7. 0-7, yeah, yeah, that's that's that ain't good. That ain't good against those teams. And then when you go into think about this, and this is why I'm going to say that, okay? Historically, there have been uh, – Seven teams that give up ten plus lead, ten plus point leads in Super Bowls. Guess what? What's that? Shanahan has lost three of those games as either the head coach or OC. And between the three Super Bowls, Shanahan teams have been outscored a combined. You ready? That's Fifty-eight to twelve in the fourth quarter and in overtime. And 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 this is where he easily could have had a a, a, a Super Bowl. As the OC with the Falcons, you remember that uh-huh. choke yeah. job? Oh, they were yeah. up twenty-eight to three, and they and 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 they uh, had a chance to to kick a field goal and to put an eleven-point lead on Tom Brady. Instead, he he still was calling passing plays, and they got a sack and a hold and fell out of uh, fell out of field goal range. And then yeah. 
And then, as I said to you, in his NFL uh, head coaching career, Shanahan 0-7 against the Bills, Chiefs, and Ravens with the average margin of de- of defeat being over 10 points. And in those games, Shanahan turn- uh, turnover differential is a minus 7. So, it, you know, beat up on a bit, the bad teams, which is what you want to do, but you should have a better record against some of the better teams. And, and that's a telling stat, 0-7 against the three three really good teams in the NFL. Okay, so really good stats there. Um, I tell you what, man, what, I, I love doing this show, but I tell you, I wish I was blessed enough to have a researcher like these big shows have because, man, they come up with some really good stats to support their arguments. Good stuff, good stuff. But anyway, um, so let me just answer this. Bruce says, but you can be a know-it-all, Brucey. I'm not sure what that was directly in response to, but I'll say this. Um, one, Bruce, I am – a man of faith, right? And as such, I'm fully aware that only only Allah knows it all, right? I'm fully aware of that. So how you perceive it is fine. That's fine. But I'm fully aware that only Allah knows it all. So I don't think that I know it all. So that's cool. Now, second of all, when someone calls me a know-it-all, I'm going to respond to that. It doesn't bother me in the least. Why does it not bother me in the least? Because I make it a point of emphasis for me personally to try and have as wide a knowledge base as I possibly can because I have a paranoia about looking stupid. And so as such, I try to be as knowledgeable as I can, and I try not to speak about things I don't know. So anyone who calls me a know-it-all, that says, wow, this guy knows a lot. So I'll take that, so it's cool. So I'm not offended by it at all. So thanks for the compliment. All right, moving right along. Um, I love the commentary that Rob Parker just gave about Kyle Shanahan. Now, again, people consider him one of the best coaches in the league. He consistently has success um, as a head coach. So Kyle Shanahan as head coach of the San Francisco 49ers, that's the only head coaching job he's ever had, uh, has an overall record of 75 and 58. This includes 67 wins and 54 losses in the regular season and eight wins and four losses in the postseason. He's had some successful seasons leading the 49ers to the Super Bowl in 2019 and 2023. And as you know, they lost both of both of them, excuse me, both appearances. And then, of course, we know that also, unfortunately, he couldn't get it done as the offensive coordinator against New England with a 28 to three lead. And obviously that was the largest comeback in Super Bowl history. And that right there probably cemented Tom Brady's lore and status as the greatest quarterback of all time. You know, so. um you know, I, I think that was incredible, but I like to I, I get what Rob Parker's saying, but I like to separate out his time as the OC from his time as a head coach, because at the end of the day, um, I think it was Washington's head coach. I can't remember his name. Uh, used to be a defensive coordinator in Dallas. Somebody put that in the chat for me. Um, so, yeah, where, where were we? Where were we? Um, geez, I can't remember his name. But anyway, it, it should have been up to the head coach to say, hey. Um, you're calling this stuff. Nah, you're, you're not doing that. You're doing this, right? You're not doing a, I want you to do B. We're going to go ahead and we're going to secure this thing and win the Falcons first ever Super Bowl. but they didn't. And at the end of the day, uh, Tom Brady cements his legacy, gets the greatest comeback in history. And arguably I I'd say it's pretty much definitively, but some people will argue it arguably the greatest quarterback of all time. Anyway. So as a head coach, um, love the stat. Kyle Shanahan is 0-7 against the current big three in the league of Buffalo, Kansas City, and Baltimore. What does that mean? That means that he wins the games against the teams that he should, but he can't get over the hump to beat the really good teams. Here's another opportunity tomorrow, right? So we'll see. Um, And a minus seven turnover differential in those situations, and you lose by an average of at least 10 points, double digits, not good, right? So then... um. Out of 10 games, giving up a double-digit lead in Super Bowl history, Kyle Shanahan was at the helm of three of them, two as a head coach, one as an OC. Pretty bad records to have there, right? Dan Quinn, thank you. Thank you, gentlemen, Dan Quinn. That was the head coach of the Falcons, who was up 28-3 to against New England in the Super Bowl, and he's now head coach of Washington. But at that point, that's what I'm saying. Dan Quinn should have been like, yo, what the hell are you doing? Nah, we're going to run this ball, run the clock out, kick the field goal, and that's it. We're going to go home winners. But he let Kyle Shanahan do his thing. Sometimes you got to save people from themselves. Um, yeah, thanks, guys. Dan Quinn. So anyway, 
Um, yeah, so three out of ten times in the Super Bowl, giving up double digit leads, Kyle Shanahan, Sh- Shanahan, excuse me, was responsible for that. That's terrible. And then you see the being outscored in the Super Bowl, the fourth quarter and overtime in the Super Bowl by a combined score of 58 to 12. That's terrible. Now, I will say a big chunk of that was obviously um, the Patriots coming back from that 28 to 3 deficit. So, like, if you took that out, it's not quite as bad, but it's still really bad, 58 to 12. So you look at it and you say, like last year, I keep pointing out when people are talking about Brock Purdy, saying he's not that good. I'm like, listen, Brock Purdy on his very last possession in the Super Bowl last year, he got points out of it. Could have been a touchdown, but okay. It wasn't a touchdown, but he still got points. He got the field goal and he left the lead. He left the field with the lead. And the team buckled after that. So we can't blame it on Purdy. Guess who should get that blame? The head coach. Kyle Shanahan has not been able to get it done against the better teams, nor on the biggest stage. And so the question now becomes, is he overrated? Like, how do we how do we evaluate this? Right. Because this is a guy who he's been to two Super Bowls with two quarterbacks. A lot of people think are, you know, subpar or average or meh, whatever you want to call it. Um, in Brock Purdy and Jimmy Garoppolo. I think Brock Purdy is way better than Jimmy Garoppolo, but that's a whole different story. Um, but a lot of people think those guys are just average quarterbacks who are able to step into the system and have success. Um, OK, uh, no matter who his running back is, he plugs a running back in and that running back is able to have success because of the way his offense is designed and the way he calls plays. So he's clearly talented on multiple fronts. But again, the question now becomes all that talent. What does it matter? Where does it go when it's needed the most? That's the problem. Like, like we talk about Lamar Jackson, Lamar Jackson's incredible. G loves to flaunt the two MVPs. Amazing how MVPs weigh more for Lamar than other people, but that's a different story. G loves to flaunt the two MVPs. And I think the two MVPs are incredible. One of them unanimous, one of them, one vote short of unanimous. Totally respect that. I'm a Ravens fan myself, but at the end of the day, when it counts most, what do those two MVPs do? What do they get you? Nothing. Cause you haven't won a Super Bowl yet. So, you know, it's, uh, it's problematic. You know, and so that's that's kind of kind of how I look at it. At some point, you still have to be responsible for what is the end result. Right. You got to be responsible for the end result. So it's tough, man. Um, I think, again, for his play design and the way that his offense is so well crafted and the fact that you can, in many cases, plug different guys in and those different guys can still have success. That speaks a lot to what he is as a head coach and what his system does. But if you can't get it done eventually on that big stage. And now we, we got to remember next year, Brock Purdy is going to get paid. So that's going to affect how you can construct your team going forward. The question is going to be asked, like, you know, is, is Kyle Shanahan like the new Marv Levy? Um, Transformer says Kyle has had the best situation as a coach for years. If he fails yet, he fails at the ultimate task, offensive weapons, defense, always top seven yet. It's the big one. I can't argue with that. I can't argue with that transformer. I, I I got nothing to say, bro. You're right. That is 100% fact. I cannot argue. Um, let's see. It's about time he will start getting more and more slack as this goes on. Uh, I don't know about slack, but he's definitely the, the pressure is mounting on him, and I know he feels it. And it also doesn't help that his dad is a you know a two time champion and a back to back Super Bowl winner. That doesn't help either, you know. And I'm sure a lot of people think that he's only where he is because of nepotism. I'm sure nepotism played a role in opening the door. But um, his acumen as as a play caller and as a play designer, you know, got him to where he is and got him the level of success. I don't I don't necessarily think it's only because of his dad, but I I totally get the point. And and you're right, Transformer. He's got to get the job done. And this year would be optimal because, again, once you pay Brock Purdy, that whole team is going to start looking a lot different. So I'm totally with you, bro. I'm totally with you. Um, yeah, so I think man, this Kyle Shanahan thing is interesting. I'm very much looking forward to seeing them uh, play the Chiefs. I think that's the game of the week tomorrow, right? Uh, I believe that's the game of the week. So that should be one that we will be able to uh, discuss with you guys tomorrow night when we do our um, Sunday NFL wrap-up. Definitely looking forward to that. Let's look at the schedule real quick. I think it's the 425 game tomorrow. Uh, yes, yes, yes. It's the game of the week. And uh, yeah, that's on Fox. I think Tom Brady's going to be on the call for that one. Okay. 
not that that's great. I don't, I don't think he's that great in the booth yet. He still needs a lot of work there. But anyway, that's cool. Um, I can tell you, though, uh, having called a game on ESPN3 before, it's not the easiest thing to get that timing right between, um, obviously, you have the you have the play-by-play person and they're calling the game and then you get, you know, they throw it over to you and you make a comment regarding, you know, as, as a color analyst. So you have to kind of know what you're talking about. You have your stats there and all that. And, but you still have to be watching the game to know what's going on. And then you have to say what you got to say in a certain amount of time so they can get back to the uh, play-by-play person. And it, it all has to go right, but it all still has to sound authentic and it, it has to be interesting. So I know it's not the easiest thing, for Tom Brady um, to be doing, but hopefully he'll figure it out because they're paying him a whole hell of a lot of money to do so. And that, but then, quick side note: we, we have this whole issue of now him having been officially voted in and approved as a minority owner of the Los Angeles Raiders. Like he can't go into other teams' facilities, he can't do a lot of the uh, uh, week weekly uh, pre-production meetings with other players and other coaches and all that stuff. I don't know how he's going to do his job, man. Because they gave this guy, I think, uh, ten years, three hundred seventy-five million dollars. It's going to be really interesting to see how they how they work that. Um, okay, thanks, Bruce. Flacco and Ed Reed will be on the Manning Cast Monday night. All right. Um, oh, that's right, because Baltimore's playing. Cool, cool. Uh, that should be a good one. That should be a good one. I'm gonna try to check that out. Appreciate you, Bruce. Um, yeah. So uh, back to uh, back to Kyle Shanahan. So yeah, he's going to be coaching in one of the biggest games of the regular season. Uh, Super Bowl rematch tomorrow afternoon and we'll see well I guess later today right it's one o'clock in the morning so we'll we'll see how that goes we will see how that goes